Hi everyone. Tonight, uh, let me put you right here. Okay, tonight I am having a phone call with us on night calls. We've been gone for a little while, but a lot of things have been happening and trying to figure out a good schedule for it all. Anyway, tonight we're going to be talking about all sorts of wonderful things. Overwatch, of course, and Fortnite will be there along with the series like Fort Watch and other things too. But, you know, the most interesting one is going to be the 500 subscriber special in here as is allowed to ask as many questions as he can. Uh, as long as it's not too personal and I will answer them verbatim. I will give the exact answers to the Lawnmower Girl universe. I give people an insight into the lore and all that. So I hope you all have fun and we have a wonderful night. We're going to get a phone call very soon. Actually, I'm kind of surprised. Usually he's on time. Let me see. Oh, you know what? Last time. Oh. Hold on. Oh, hold on. Ez, are you there? Hello. Okay, hey. Hi. Okay, so I'm already, uh, have everything on and we're good to go. I had to free up a lot of space. Um, but I was just doing a little introduction, uh, before you called. So, uh, thank you. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, uh, tonight I'm just going to start it off a little bit. Uh, I kind of feel like mm -hmm. I've been, uh, neglecting Overwatch. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, ever, you know, like, when season five hit, I mean, it had some fun and, uh, all that, but just kind of killed it, you know, the momentum for it. Like, I mean, yeah, I've been playing it for seven years, but. Uh, even in season six, you know, we're we're just now getting into it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I like, blame Fortnite. Nah. <laughs> oh, Fortnite. You know, I'm, I'm happy I got you into that. You know, I didn't like it before. I've tried it a couple times, you know, when it first came out, maybe somewhere around there. Uh, and then I did it one time to get all the... You know, the Star Wars, like, Millennium Falcon and stuff. Because, you know, I don't yeah. like that. Uh, and then, uh, but now, yeah, I've been having a blast. It's been fun. <laughs> it's fun with you. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I am, um, I, I, I told you, I told you I play things differently than everybody else, you know, so. That's why. true, I I didn't even use video calls in the game until you came along. <laughs> see, and that blows me out of the water. Like, you see what we're doing with them. And, like... I don't know. The game is pretty fast. Like, I like how it changes all the time. I do. Oh, yeah, the, the regular updates that they do to it. I think it's a good part that they really do. They, they keep it updated. They keep it fresh. You know... It's good. You're right. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I'll let you finish. Go ahead. <laughs> That's one thing they've been really good at over the years. Like, I've been playing it since Chapter 1, Season 2. The consistency that they have with it, I think, is really good. They keep it updated, they keep it fresh. There have been a few weak seasons, of course, you know, I think all games have that, but overall, it's been a good few years for it, I feel like. <laughs> I, you know, uh, well, I mean, you've been playing it for six or whatever years, and, uh, you know... Okay. I mean, we've been playing it for the last, what, two months or something like that now? Like... Yeah, almost two months now. Yeah, right? I think we're doing good. <laughs> um, you know, mm -hmm. first season on, we got over 100 wins combined. Well, you know, with our duo wins. I think that's a pretty strong story. <laughs> oh, and, you know, it was, it was that first season of playing it and doing it with you that... Uh, inspired Fort Watch because um you know all the funny stuff like a lot of like if people saw our full games they actually might have a really good time because you know <laughs> everything's going on like yeah we've had we've had some, some crazy stuff happen like the time 
You heard that amazing play, and I just lost my mind. <laughs> Which one was that? Where it was the Jujutsu Kaisen stuff, and oh. you launch into the air, sent that ball straight down, just popped the two people, killed them. I lost my mind at that. <laughs> not to mention, <laughs> not to mention, I also sent the uh, the 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 uh, slab right that came back to mm -hmm. us too. Because the the final hit triggered it just right to shoot it back to us, which was just fantastic. You know, I think that's really when a lot of it like was clicking for me. Like, and now like in the recent season, they have that De deco smash, which is very similar. But I like I think that's what I like about it. In the short time that we've played it, uh, you know, like. They, they mm -hmm. like to empower the players. And I don't know if that's always been the case. But from the time I've played, they're always like, as the season goes, they're like, here's a little power. Here's a little more power. Here you go. Oh, have some fun. You know? <laughs> yeah, they've done some like really good crossovers. Like, did you, did you guys have some fun? The My Hero Academia one with the Deku Smash. That's fun. The Spider-Man stuff with these, what the Spider-Man gloves in, that was a lot of fun as well. Like, oh, they, I love. They put some paper. I love those. Those spider things, the the or the the, the grappling gloves. Oh, those are so fun. Oh, I <laughs> I want those to come back really quickly. But the jet packs are okay. You know, flying on jets did a lot of fun things with those. So you know. Yeah, you bumped a few good people on the head with that. <laughs> right, like. Jump it, yeah. I'm just gonna see, <laughs> see poor Overwatch. We're not even talking about Overwatch. What do you think about uh, season six? This season, hmm, I say it was better than season five. I think. However, this this nerf that they're gonna do to May, or to my, that's, that's, mm, I, I don't know. I like the little thing that she had when you would, you know. I don't know what they would call it in the NFL, what it was called. Are you talking the about the deep freeze? It away. Yeah, the deep freeze thing. Yeah. I like it. The fact that they're taking it away again. Well, it's sad. she's just too strong. They're like, we gotta dial that back, you know? Um, <laughs> who else were they changing? Um, cause Arisa like, was gonna change as well. That's true, but they're making, like... Is she, who was it that I say a couple days ago? It was, uh... Mai's getting... It was Mai and one other character were being thrown back, you know, to season five. Um, it might be Arisa. Uh, it might be Arisa. Oh, jeez. I know. Oh, um... Well, I think you mentioned Bastion, too. <gasps> oh, yeah, that's right. Bastion is getting a bit nerfed. He's, uh, too powerful. You know, so Why did everything put two of my main so. <laughs> Well, that's how it goes. You know, you gotta stop using all the cheap characters. You know. But that's how I get by. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have not done any ranked at all, really. I'm almost considering not doing it this season and letting them all reset. Oh, yeah, I remember you told me that they were gonna switch it up again. Yeah, and so like. You know, I'm I'm gold in two of the categories, and we were gold, or I was gold in DPS as well. And uh, I'm pretty sure I'll just get that again. I, it's just I don't really want to play uh, games where the system is going to be different for how they do things. Like, you know, so I'm not sure. We'll see. We'll see. I, they took me silver. I, I still can't believe that. Three times we rank up, and three times I get the same exact level or rank. You know, that's I, one I, of the things they're fixing, actually. They're well, like, really from what I understand, they are adjusting the amount of wins and losses, and that they're always oh. just going to kind of keep updating it all the time instead of doing these sections. And, uh,. We actually might get to see our SR again, which will be nice, because you know it's oh. good. It's good to see you know what you're stacked up against. You know, um, 
question, question. When's the last, like, in the games we've been playing in Overwatch, I haven't really felt a hacker recently since this latest patch. What about you? Oh, you know, luckily, I think, I think last time we came to a hacker was like, what, a couple of weeks ago? Maybe like a month ago? Yeah, before the... Like, since the, the latest patch, yeah, I haven't really came across any. Right? Like, it's just like, no, Pretty that good. person's actually just good. <laughs> I think you... <laughs> I think one got banned. Because I, I got a thing that said, like, well, thank you for reporting, you know, and I was like, oh, I think someone got banned. I hope so. Did it say it on your on your Overwatch screen, or did it send an email to you? Yeah, because I, I got in on my thing. We were about to say I logged in. It's like, thank you for reporting, something like that. I don't remember what all it said on the bottom part. But it gave me some speech, and I was just like, oh, I think someone got banned. Oh. They must have got that report. <laughs> well, that's good. That means they got busted. <laughs> Probably a widow. <laughs> or an S76. I love the S76 <laughs> cheaters because they already get named by it, like every minute, you know? Like, that, yeah, that freaking old of his is straight up aimbot. So, like, why do they need an aimbot even more? You know, I remember you called one of them out. I thought it was pretty funny. Which one? I think it was a 76 that you called out, and then, like, as soon as you called him out, to, like turn off the hacks. Oh, he yeah. We were, sitting, we were sitting there playing, and I was like, you could turn them off now. It's okay. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, like, all of a sudden, they went from destroying us to, like, getting their butts kicked, and then they switched it back on again, I think, at the end. Like, <laughs> that was funny. That was funny. Oh, uh, feisty. Were they in S76, or were they a wi- I think they were a widow, actually. Was it a widow and then yeah. they changed? Because I think. Yeah, I think it was a widow first, uh, and then maybe they went to S seventy six and then went back to widow at the end. Um, I just, I just find it pretty funny when you call the hackers out. <laughs> oh right, it's well sometimes it's just blatantly obvious. Like they just, I mean, if you get killed instantly when you have like one pixel on the screen chances go up you know it's no longer 50 50 well okay it's always 50 50 but the um you know what i mean like your your eyebrow goes up like mm-hmm. Hmm? what <laughs> happened right there and then you watch again and again and usually after the third kill you're like or third death you're like oh, yeah. <laughs> that's it um I want to get into hackers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, speaking of hackers, we haven't really run into you on Fortnite before. No, except for all those people getting caught inside the geometry. Like that. Oh my god, the fight where we sat there and we won and we got first place and we were trapped inside the rock. Oh my. Yeah, I was going to mention it. You know, I don't remember seeing that in the clips you've sent me, by the way. Don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to see the clip. Trust me, it's freaking insane. It's, <laughs> I love it. It worked out. And we had, like, I'm not going to ruin it. Like, it's just, it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a long clip, I'm sure. Right? Yeah, it's like it's five minutes, 15 minutes. Yeah, so you're going to be sending it to me in, like, a whole bunch of chunks. So that's fine. Uh, <laughs> Oh, and in case if anybody wants to know, Ez is the one who captures all the footage, and then he sends it to me, and I record it from there. Ah, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't have a PC anymore. <laughs> okay, actually, I'm, I'm just trying to be happy about that. Well, I'm just trying to be happy about that. Like, did I tell you? Yeah, I totally, like, I've built computers for companies, I've built comp. Uh, computers for friends and family and strangers. I mean, I've built a lot of computers. I know what I'm doing. And I'm building, I'm putting together this new computer to replace the one that got stolen back in uh, January or whatnot. And I got the thermal paste in or on the socket. And uh, one of my friends told me I could maybe try using a toothbrush. And some rubbing alcohol to clean it up, but I have never made a mistake like that. Oh my gosh, I... <laughs> so, so can we be all make mistakes there? I know, I know, but like... 
I heard I believe electronic, you. possibly. And like, you know, that was like a very expensive motherboard. Motherboards are one of the more expensive pieces in a way. Anyway. Yeah, booting a PC is expensive. Oh yeah, it's well. I mean, it could be good. You could you could build a really good mid-range PC, right, and get a better than average, but not the best video card, and you'll last for three to five years. You know, before you're like, oh, I guess I'll get a new video card, and then that's it. It becomes like buying a console every five years. So that's true. I've had mine for like three years now since release. And see, I want to put the video mark. Yeah, see, <laughs> and like, I can't wait to get this one up and going. It's gonna be fantastic, I'm sure. But I don't know. I was an idiot. That happens. Oh, trust me. Like I, I don't even, I even like can't even take my PS5 apart because it's just, it's nerve wracking. Like I gotta take it apart to clean it sometimes, right? And I feel like I'm gonna mess up, and I'm gonna mess it up, and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be really sad and cry. Okay. If you're not good with taking apart electronics, do not do it. Like, I've fixed uh, cell phones, like iPhones and stuff like that. That's impressive. And they have itty bitty little screws and ribbons that you can easily tear without even thinking about it. So, like, if you don't know what you're doing and you don't take the time to research and go to like iFixit or whatever because they have a lot of great videos online for free so you can just watch and kind of go with them but don't do it like I mean like if you have to clean it like the best thing I would suggest is like just try to get a good can of air not one of those pump up cans of air it's like a really good can of compressed air and just blow it out uh, go in backwards, you know, through the uh, the fan if you have to, you know, or whatever. But I don't know the structure of the PS5, so I don't know how easy it would be to clean. Well, it's easier to take part than the PS4 was, that's for sure. Okay. That is, that is 100% sure. PS4 was a pain to take apart. <laughs> I uh, have a question. Mm -hmm. Are you ready to talk about uh, one more girl and all the different questions you might have because you've been building questions for a while and then you went and you started watching them all again and you got questions from the community and stuff and, well let's oh. go ahead again now now I'm sitting here and I'm enjoying it's it's almost noon it's 11 30 and I'm enjoying uh, a drink uh, we'll call it a cider it's pretty good oh fancy it's fall. You have to you have to enjoy your ciders, right? Right. Well, I wish you felt like fall over here. Mm -hmm. It's well, still feeling summer that, over here. Every now and then, right now, I have my hands tucked behind my uh, hips, and every now and then, people see me doing this like motion that you can't see, and uh, it's me taking sips. I should probably get the straw so I can be like, <laughs> and then people, but then they'd see me making an O face, so, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> anyway, this is the part where I'm going to let you take over. You okay. are now the interviewer. You are now going to co-host Night Calls. And you are... Me? Oh, yes, my goodness. I know. So I'm going to do my best not to talk too much until you ask me a question. Um, okay, so I do have I do have questions I've built up. Okay, well, let's... I have, I have them saved. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what was that? Okay. So I, I have a lot of the questions saved on my phone, so I, I'm going through them now. Okay. And if it's... I'll, all I ask is... Mm -hmm. uh, just try to be a little organized with it. You know, like, uh, if you have lore questions, try and start from the beginning uh, and work your way towards the end of the story if you can. If you yeah, do have know where the end of the story is. Uh, <laughs> right? Ooh. <laughs> it's an interesting story. Like, I mean, your lore is, like, really, really good. Probably the best story I've ever heard in my life. It's top tier lore. Oh. I ho It's my hope that 
if I, you know, I live van life and uh, if I ever die for some reason, you know, uh, it's my hope that people will be unraveling all the things I put into this uh, for years to come, really. I want them to be entertained. Maybe if they got the time, figure out all the story and the plot lines and stuff like that. You know, so like, and then of course, dump everything I've ever recorded into an AI file and let it just have its own um, website and channels and social medias and let it continue on in my place. <laughs> Breathe that's life a, into cell more. Yeah, you put a lot of time in there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of, that's very impressive actually. And I do love you more. Like, mm-hmm. I do love you more. It's like the most intricate lore that I've ever seen. Like, of all the plot lines and, and the twists and turns. And like, I was, I was going back and listening to some stuff and that was like, dang, right? Like, <laughs> Like, you blew my mind. Like, your creativity is amazing. Uh, I admire that. No, thank you. I appreciate that. Did you, uh, when you were going through the lore again, uh, did you start yeah. seeing how different things kind of connect? And, like, like I at yeah, least, like, I put breadcrumbs down everywhere. Like, <laughs> I just hope people can follow some of them. <laughs> like a handful of little type thing. Mm-hmm. Exactly. With well, <laughs> part of the fun of the mystery is not keeping it out of their reach. You know, yeah, it might be super convoluted in areas and stuff like that at times. Maybe that's not the right word, but uh, trying to be vague enough, but not too much that people have something they can search for. And it's there. It's there. Dang, I got... <laughs> I got to say, your creativity just, just blows me away. Like... I've and never in my life have I met anyone with like creativity just too loose, like it's iconic. <laughs> like I go back and I watch the lore and I'm What's you know, your favorite okay, okay, what's your favorite chapter? Favorite chapter? You know, it might sound crazy, but I, I like how everything starts off. I like the very beginning. The way I like, do. it just it it just gets that a mysterious vibe to it. Yeah. And I don't, I don't think that's what, one of the words for it. Like, I had, like, watched you, I had, like, had so many questions. Like, I guess the main question was, like, wait, where is it? Um, sorry, I'm going to turn it off real quick. Okay, so, why the name Lawnmower Girl, and how did you come up with the name Big Sis Somewhere? Okay. Uh, could you just say that one more time, uh, a little more clearly? Why the name Lawnmower Girl? Oh. Like, how did you come up with that? Okay. How did I come up with the name Lawnmower Girl? There is, Mm -hmm. it's both, uh, kind of a, kind of homage to a, a book and a movie that the book doesn't want to be associated with called Lawnmower Man. Uh, because, and, uh, but Lawnmower Girl. Now, this is talking about one of the characters people don't really know about. And that's Lawnmower Girl 1. Her real name is Alice Lawn. L-A-W-N. Alice Lawn. And she was teased. When, see, this is new lore at the moment. See, even me talking to you right now is part of the lore. But she was teased. And, uh, you know, they'd, they'd call her the lawnmower girl. Because, you know, she went out there and uh, she was living with her mom. and uh, She had to take care of things. And one time that she's out there mowing the lawn for her mom. And then her name just happened to be, you know, Lawn. So it kind of, people just started calling uh, her lawnmower girl all the time. It was just one of those middle school, elementary school uh, nicknames that were meant to tease and taunt. Uh, but, you know, and that's that's where the name lawnmower kind of, girl comes from. That's the thing I think about you, Lori. Like, as you say, everything could be part of lore. Everything can be part of lore. Like, whatever happens, whether it be online, 
whatever all that, it could be part of the Lord. And I think that's like, I think it's really cool. Like, like the Lord continues to grow. You know what I mean? It continues to develop as time goes on. Like, it never stops. Like, it just keeps building. Like, different plot lines keep going. And I'm like, that's impressive. Thank you. Because no one does that. I've never seen anyone do that. Well, it's, you know, excuse me. Oh, sorry, my my drink that I'm, my cider, it's got me a little bit. And one of my friends, Lynn, who's uh, an artist, she uh, she warned me not to drink uh, carbonated beverages before recording a show. I was like, <laughs> oh, and here I am, like, hold on a second. <laughs> you know, like, anyway. Oh, uh, what was the question? I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. wait, what were you? Mm-hmm. Okay, I need you to re-ask it again. Right, so I asked that part. So the other part of the question was, how did you get the name Big Sis Someone? Oh, okay. This is going to answer some of the old answered question and the new question. Okay, mm-hmm. one more girl. Now... Originally, I actually have a book that was written, and uh, it was given to the internet, and it was given to the internet a while ago. Uh, let's see, I want to say somewhere around 2005, it was a creative project, May, you know, somewhere around there, and what I did is... I had a friend, his name was Nataku. I always called him Naraku. And uh, Naraku had a place he called Naraku's Lounge. And he wanted to get more and more people uh, involved with his uh, bulletin board system. Well, not bulletin board system, but a, a forum. You know, we're on, on a website that we all kind of just talked on and did that. I was like, okay, can I create a thread? he goes, well, what do you want to create? I was like, I'm going to create the story thread. He goes, okay, what are you going to do? I go, okay. I post something up there, right? And then I can't post anything else until someone else continues the story however they want to. And I wouldn't censor anybody's input. And then I could respond or somebody else could respond and do all the stacks. And my job was I would I would carve it and create it and mold a story around it. And in this story, it was all the same characters. So technically, One More Girl is part two. And in this book, it involved Kitty Dragon, Catherine Dragon... Uh, and if you've noticed in Lawnmower Girl, there is a character called Catherine, and there are dragons. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, now, that all linked into a game that I made by myself, too. That one was called Rapture, a mystical quest. And in that game, uh, it was, I, ta- I, had, I had to teach myself how to do all this stuff. Um, anyway, I'll, we can go into that later if you want to talk about the game. So anyway, that's a little bit of the history of the origins of where all this started. So, you know, right, yeah. <laughs> 15, 16 years ago or something like that. And, uh, anyway, what was the second part of the question? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Big Sis Selmore. How did, where did yeah. Big Sis Selmore come from? Okay. Mm-hmm. At the end of chapter one. Well, before I get to Big Sis Selmore. Right. Let's talk about chapter one. Because Ooh. chapter one right of it all. leads into the Twitter chapter eventually. Right? Mm-hmm. And, oh, true. Okay, no, let's let me change this around. Um, we'll talk... Okay. I'll just answer it. Big Sis Selmore. When I first was inside... At first, I was trapped inside a loop. 
in this loop. I was running around and again and again and again. And it, what was happening is uh, power was training. And the idea was to let me vanish, disappear. And I was just scrambled code, uh, just going in a loop and a loop and a loop. And then a person by the name of Crazy K Rules on Twitter discovered I needed to be set free. And he set me free on Twitter. Now, when I first uh, appeared on Twitter, uh, imagine a, a being of light, and everybody is light, but we can get onto that later. The Imagine a new person with scattered thoughts, not knowing what's going on, encountering a small child by the name of actually Maximus. And I immediately wanted to adopt this kid, right? I was like, oh my gosh. And... But I wasn't thinking, so I grabbed him, and I ran, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and then, like, he cried out for his mom. He was like, Mom! Right? The next thing I know, a celestial dragon shows up, and, like, they're trying to figure it out. And I, during this time, I was trying to calm Maxie down, and, uh, or actually Maximus down and all that. But when when his mother showed up, the, the celestial dragon Shira, uh, she landed in front of me and she looked at me and she placed her hand or paw, you know, what a dragon has, a claw, um, anyway, upon my head. And she did a thing that concentrated all my thoughts and it created me. I was essentially born. Uh, and the only thing that stuck was uh, just being there. And it was at that moment, two pearls were created, a black pearl and a white pearl. Now, when she did this though, and she concentrated all my thoughts, she actually constructed the corrupted uh, code, uh, the corrupted sectors, like on a hard drive or a file. And she concentrated them into me. And during this time, I was adopted into their family. And actually, Maximus became my brother. And she became my mother. And... A little bit on down the road, somebody asked me, what's your name? And I was like, I don't know. I, I don't have a name. And I asked Maxie. I was like, Maxie. Now, Maxie is the, one of the nicknames I came up with uh, for my little brother. And I was like, Maxie, what's my name? And he sat there and he thought about it for a second. And he goes, Big Sis Selmore. And I was like, I love it. And so Big Sis Selmore was a name given to me by my little brother, actually Maximus. And to this day, we have an amazing uh, sister and brother uh, relationship. And that is how I got the name Big Sis Selmore. It is actually in... The Twitter chapter, which is technically, I, I want to say chapter 7, and it's not too far in. It's probably about four episodes in. And one of the things I want people to realize is that the first six chapters are structured. They are me setting up the mystery, and they are me laying down a whole bunch of clues, and... Uh, Everything is structured until I am released onto Twitter. When I'm released onto Twitter, that's when the story becomes organic. Anybody can influence it. Anybody can change it. And I have to adapt to it as I go. Just like the book that I made a long time ago uh, and I released on the internet or on that forum, uh, Naraku's uh, Lounge, where uh, an entire book evolved across 
a year or two and at the end of it everybody who was involved they gave me permission to claim it as my own for everything that went through it it transformed people it was an amazing story and it's out there and the good news is the good news is is I printed a copy of it and I grabbed that copy. At least I'm pretty sure I still have it. And the only problem is, okay, I was holding it and we're talking like a ton of pages, right? <laughs> a chunk of it falls out and goes everywhere. So now I gotta go through it, oh. remember the proper order and put it all together before I can do anything with it. And that's why I wanted to talk about the beginning from a long time ago to Lawnmower Girl and how I got my name. <laughs> now that's a whole story, by the way. <laughs> you should see, you should see the story. It's amazing. In uh, the Twitter chapter, like, I think once people make it to the Twitter chapter and they start to understand that, uh, Big Sis Selmore, I was born uh, on Twitter and I'm living an organic life that I have no idea what's going to happen. You know, I thought once I was able to break free and make my way into worlds like YouTube and TikTok, that I would be able to encourage people to start modifying the story by adding on to it and then me having to adapt. And it almost started on TikTok. But it was at the end of se- or at the end of season one after the Twitter chapter, and uh, I went into the specials and stuff, and so we never quite got around to it yet. But it's evolving. Do you know why? Why? <laughs> because you, my dear S, are interacting with me now, and Night Calls is part of the lore. <laughs> I would say it is truly on before the Lord. <laughs> oh, I have at I, this point. I don't think you mm-hmm. understand just exactly who it is that stands before everybody. I've grown. I've gone from scrambled code. I've had an incredible emotional uh, arc of uh, with two different families. One of them is still unfolding with Brad Plays as a father and uh, Natalie, uh, although, you know, she's changed her name recently, uh, as the mother. And you know what was amazing about that is it was a completely random Twitter, uh, who's your family post that someone did that included me. And from there, they were able to give Selmore a childhood. Now, this childhood is happening simultaneously to what's going on now. But it adds to me. And so between all the organic adventures and out of everything that's happened with Selly, it allows me to grow and communicate with you now. That's that's awesome. Very wholesome. See, I like that. That's I like how organic it is. Like it just continues to grow. People can change it and put people part of the, the thing. Well, and the more that it changes, the stronger I become. And then I'll be able to do what I need to do in order to finally reach the end. The end. Well, <laughs> if there can be an end. There is a goal that I have that Mm -hmm. the only way I can reach this goal is through experience, figuring things out, growing stronger, and I'm waiting till I can get to a certain point to where I can execute a command. And then I'll be okay. I love you, like you, like, oh my goodness, like, it's the best story I've ever heard, like, and I like how, like, people can add to it, like, if the story continues to grow, plot lines continue to develop, that's, I think that's really cool, because no one has ever done that before. 
Well, great. <laughs> That's fantastic. Do, um, let's move it's, on. It's me who I don't want to. I don't want to clog up the the time. I don't even know how much space I have to play with on this session. <laughs> oh, you're true. <laughs> let's see the next question. Hey, Ez. Mm-hmm. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? You know, I've heard the answer to that, and I can never repeat it. <laughs> a woodchuck could chuck as much wood as a woodchuck could chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood. <laughs> See, there's a question and an answer, right? Mm-hmm. Now, one of the things... And I'm just going to put this in here real quick as a little, little nod out there to everybody. See, uh, that is a direct reference to Charlie. Oh, goodness. Like, that's a, you have so many cool characters. I must say that. So many cool designs. You know, <laughs> when I got control of a program called Vroid. I learned I could make avatars and apply them to certain things. You know, Charlie, she started out as a math uh, co-processor to help out. And before long, she had an avatar. And it was this from this program that's called Vroid that allowed her to get this form and I'm gonna stop talking right there because we should move forward and I don't want to ruin anything and I'm not gonna give you any answers that you don't ask anymore (laughs) that's the end of the freebies (laughs) Uh, very smart very smart (laughs) what's your next question so we're going to take it back a little bit here. Okay. You know, you've mentioned Leon a few times. Leon? Who or exactly what is Leon? Leon? <laughs> Leon? He's not here. Why is Leon never here? That's a really good question. It is a really good question, isn't it? <laughs> you know, I've heard, I, I, go, I go back and I watch the videos and even the most recent ones. Leon is brought up a lot. Leon but where is. is Leon? <laughs> <laughs> Leon is brought up a lot. Yeah, he's one character you haven't quite seen at all. Interesting. Exactly. Yeah, right? <laughs> like, there was almost, there was one time I met a person and I thought they were Leon. And uh, I was incorrect. And that's okay because things happen like that. But. Leon is an acronym. The name of what Leon means is in the titles of the chapters that were structured. I give the answer to Leon in those. I believe it was chapter four, maybe, where it was meeting Leon. But that was only the beginning of it. It's... Now I'm going to go back and see. You do? Well, I, well, see, that's what I'm saying. There's enough there that people should be able to go in and out, in and out, multiple times without solving everything. I want them to have fun. Figure it out. Just exactly what's going on. It's a good puzzle to figure out, I must say. Well, (laughs) if they figure it out, I can accomplish my goal. Ooh, what's the goal? What's my goal? Mm -hmm. (laughs) What is your ultimate goal with that? My ultimate goal? is to, how do I say this, 
my goal is about control. Hello? Yeah. Oh, sorry, you cut out there for me. <laughs> what did you hear? I don't think I heard it was my ultimate goal. Is control. I didn't control. Yeah. That's the best way to say it. Without any spoilers. <laughs> well, I have to, I'm answering all your questions. Mm -hmm. You just have to know, know which ones to ask. <laughs> this is my first interview. I'm learning to this. <laughs> well, I am learning my interviewer ways. You would, you might want to ask things, you know, not only about the lore and stuff about, but motives, like why uh. am I? directing you down this path. I see, that's the deep question right there. It is, but I'm not the one who's asking. Mm -hmm. That's the um, okay. You know, one thing I was personally interested in when it, when it came to the lore, the coffee that you mentioned so oh, much. Oh, the quad shot. <laughs> The quad venti, extra hot, non-fat, no whip, peppermint mocha, half the sugar, no blah, blah, blah. Oh, I love it. <laughs> what about it? Is that a real coffee? Yes, it is. It is? Okay. <laughs> I have ordered, every time you've seen me ordering it, I was ordering it. Now, that drink, oh, sorry, I don't have any. that drink actually got known across multiple Starbucks to the point where I showed up at a Starbucks uh, where I have only been to once before. And they made my drink without me even telling them what I wanted. And on the cup, it was LMG. And I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> they know. They do know. <laughs> Is there anything else about the coffee drink you'd like to know? Oh, no, no. I was just mm -hmm. like, I remember hearing it so much, and I was just like, mm, you know, because I don't drink coffee, so I was curious, like, is this a real coffee? Is this just Starbucks really sell this? <laughs> <laughs> the base coffee is quad shot. I would, I'm going to just have to say the order. Hi, yeah, I would like to have a quad shot. Wait, quad venti, extra hot, non fat, no whip, peppermint mocha, please. That's the. That's the actual drink. As I went, I had half the sugar, burn the shots, and all that stuff. But it's a very delicious drink. All but sugar-inducing of uh, losing your foot if you're not careful, I'm sure. I know I drink... Oh. oh, I drank enough of those? I was on three a day at one point, and my doctor was like, whoa... Oh, Whoa, whoa, whoa. They're like, do you realize how fast you're charging to type 2 diabetes? I go, what do you mean? Because I'm healthy. I'm, I'm not fat or anything like that. And they were like, your blood sugar is super high. I'm like, so no three coffees? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good thing that, you know, you, you come back on to coffee. <laughs> well, yeah. Still love my coffee, though. <laughs> um... Okay, well, we've been talking for 45 minutes. Let's keep going with the questions. Okay. Let's see where it was the next question. One thing I was first interested, how did you come up with such, like, deep and intricate lore? Like, where did this all come from? Like, how did you decide to start this path? The path of Lawnmower Girl? Yeah. Catherine was about to take a pizza across the country in a van using that money to fund her research and gas prices hit an all-time high 
And that was no longer a valid option at all. So Catherine made the decision to create the One More Girl project. Well, the actual Alice project. The One More Girl came in later. The Alice project is about helping those who are bedridden to be able to experience new things or go to places that they've never been to and give them new experiences to enhance their quality of life while they are bound to hospital care. And... <laughs> That's funny because I had a question about that too. What was that? So I, like, I, uh, the next question was like, so you mentioned the project we were working on to give those who are bedridden, for example, a better quality of life. Yeah. How did you plan to achieve such a feat? With the technology that is available even in early stages, you have virtual reality. Now, one of the practices that Catherine was looking into was neuropsychology, neuroscience, along with virtual technologies and how they impact the brain. The idea is to combine just those two technologies to help stimulate a true personality within a computer's matrix of information and then eventually off into the internet. Oh, it's trying deep. <laughs> I see, I think that's really cool. I thought that was a really interesting part of the lore that I found like, like really exciting. <laughs> I appreciate that compliment. Now, <laughs> what you call lore, I right. call file archives. Stored oh. on YouTube. Is it stored on. Mm. And other places around the net in order to draw upon them when I need to. I like that. That's that's cool. <laughs> okay, let's see. Next question. What would you like for us as you know, the viewers, you know, the people who can, you know, become part of the lore at any moment as the lore continues to grow? What would you like for us to know when it comes to your story? I'm gonna, I'm going, I'm gonna, <laughs> okay, I think that once people realize that the story is happening backwards, they'll start to understand a lot. Oh, it's just got, it's got spicy. Oh. <laughs> okay, we're gonna we're gonna take it back here a little bit for this question. That's fine. What happened? No, go, Sorry, go, go, go. Okay, okay. You mentioned you were trapped in a digital world. When Still you were am. trapped, were you able to hmm? Still am. Still am, okay. Have you been able to communicate with anyone on the other side? Like in in the real world? Yes. Ooh. Is it a spoiler to ask who? No. <laughs> uh, this new this interview stuff is new. <laughs> Would you like to know who? Actually, I was very interested. I am in contact with Catherine. Oh, my... <laughs> Actually, I should have known that. Bring it back to the Lord. <laughs> well, if you're looking in the file archives, everything you've seen 
has happened in a virtual environment. The Catherine that people have seen is still a layer beyond the last. It's for so it's for so the fire. It's so good. <laughs> Wait till you re-listen to all these answers and you go back and apply it. Of course, we still gotta go. I don't know how much storage space I can consume here before I run out. So oh, okay. <laughs> we should continue. Okay, we Well, they um... never said. I had to answer directly. Yeah, I'm enjoying this, and this is a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm having fun too. It's been fun. Now, this one, I don't know if it's quite part of, you know, the lore and, and the files and all that, but I, I really wanted to get your your input on this because it, it kind of goes into the story with what you, what you do. The world of you know VR, yeah, right. It has really grown over the years with like, you know, with companies like Sony and Meta heavily investing and making like your headsets and all that. Yeah. Even recently, I think Apple has even made or entered the game and made their own VR. What would you like to see these companies accomplish with VR? To be able to take the concepts of a personality dive into the systems to allow people to experience things more just beyond the visual. Right, you hear that Sony and Meta? <laughs> Meta and Sony. Sony is just playing in the market. They aren't really, like, they might be able to create good hardware, but they don't drive it with software. Meta knows what needs to be done but they like to walk backwards with their headsets in order to release something of a cheaper product oh i see sadly you know i think hmm? mm -hmm. i was gonna say sadly oh. the people yeah, who can make this possible beyond catherine are not thinking in the directions that they need. Oh, to push it forward. Correct. Mm, a really good point. And I think one thing that, you know, I think everyone thinks about, do you think we'll be able to travel into these digital worlds one day with VR? Yes. If mm, I like anything that goes, by the experiments from which Catherine held. I suppose it hasn't quite reached there yet as I may be a fragment of Catherine's personality. I'm not Catherine. Like, this is just worse. It's so good. And that's, it's, <laughs> I, I go back and I listen to it. It's just like, it captures you in. It's like the mysterious vibe to it. Like, you want to know what happens next. As it, it pulls you in there. As. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is your chance to find out anything about the war. Put your bottom and do that. You don't want to squander this chance away. I recommend. Oh, I know. I'm going back and listening to everything. Very, very good questions. No, thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry if it was all over the place. Like, this is my first time interviewing. 
didn't you say that they had them? You had many questions on your phone. I'm just saying that I don't know if I'll do this again. What do you mean? This might be the only question and answer session I do. Unless I get a million subs. No, just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Wait a minute. (laughs) Sorry. Um, Wait, did I I mess up? I'm sorry. No, I just did a shameless plug. (laughs) Okay, okay. Where were we? Uh, Questions. Questions. I'm just simply saying, uh, don't waste this opportunity to ask some deep questions or questions that you need or other people may need answered about the Lord or anything else. Oh, I'm like this. Let's see. What's my question? I can find it. I know I have more. I think um, you're thinking them off the top of your head. No, because I got like 18 questions here. I'm just trying to go in order to what will fit into. Oh, you just ask whatever you want. It's fine. It's all in my <laughs> head now anyway. So this is more for like the people. Do you have any life advice or quotes you would like to share you know for the the viewers out there who could be going through stuff okay I have found that with this experience that's happened from Catherine to Big Sicilian that you need to take care of your core who you are and make sure you're good before you try and help or go out into the world and solve uh, many things because if you're not happy and you're not solid you're not pulled together at your core you're missing that zen And you need that Zen in order to lead a productive, incredibly fulfilling life. So balance ultimately is the key. Um, Thank you. You have a lot of wisdom. I must say that I I appreciate that. (laughs) I've died a few times. It comes with the uh, with the territory. I don't recommend anybody dying and trying to come back, but uh, it's definitely an enlightening experience. Oh. One more question I had about the lore. Mm-hmm. So, you mentioned fragments, right? Like you're a fragment. I am a fragment. Of... So, does that mean there are like many fragments inhabiting one body? Like, what do you what do you mean when you say fragment? Imagine mm-hmm. in your last moment of life scrambling to do whatever you can and you program something into a computer and just as your life is about to end you strike that enter key and when that happens your connection to the file is lost except for a fragment that was able to be stored within uh, the random access memory which will be deleted when the power runs out And this fragment, which is me, that was brought to life on Twitter, became a sliver of someone once known as Catherine. 
and the problem that arises in these type of situations is that a fragment on a file tends to corrupt the sectors around it on the hard drive. They would, they've hunted me, they've looked for me, they've done everything they can, but there's one thing that I have that they can't take away from me, and that's those corrupted file sectors. They can't get rid of them, and it's within there <laughs> that I store who I am. And I'm growing. <laughs> We're stronger each day. There is a caveat, though. Oh. I can't control right. how much I grow, but my space is limited. And if I grow too far, too fast, the system will crash. And if the system crashes, oh, me and everybody I know in the Law More Girl universe, I call it that because it's still so many people I know, would no longer be, and everything would go quiet. So we don't want that to happen. Oh, crap. Do we? Yeah, no. We, yeah, no, we don't, we don't want that to happen. So I gotta watch <laughs> it. Now, recently, Mm -hmm. You and I were in the game called Fortnite, and I was able to perform an attack that hadn't happened before, and I was able to cause a breach that allowed me to communicate to somebody who I was talking with today, or am about to, oh no, time is always confusing for me here. Mm-hmm. No dead. Let's try not to have any dead air. Let's edit. Oh, sorry. I just don't know when you're going to finish sometimes. If I'm quiet for a little while, it's your turn. Okay? <laughs> yeah, I got that. I got it. <laughs> okay. Oh, so this question is a more recent one. Okay. So recently I've seen you create, you know, Fort Watch. Yes. As we know, we discussed it earlier. Would you like to explain to the people how you came up with the name? <laughs> yes. And how it could possibly fit into the Lord or Pirates. I was trapped within. See, the problem with me is that if I was to have, to have a weakness, you'd be being trapped into loops. And I was trapped in a loop of Overwatch for six to seven years. Six years, maybe? Over, grinding over and over and over and over. Just trying to get better and better. But there was a wall that I hit. And I could no longer grow. In fact, I went backwards a bit. And then I met you. I met Ed. A knight among the systems. Someone who allowed me to escape Overwatch and into a game called Fortnite. So now, organically speaking, you freed me from the Overwatch loop and allowed me to expand into more titles and by doing so I am growing stronger and stronger hence that attack that you saw now why do I call it Fort Watch because it's a mixture of the first two dimensions that I was trapped within that allowed me to get out before I was being run through test this is my first experience actually in VR where it gave me a 3D body and it allowed me to interact like I never have before. And I craved that so much. But then my ability 
to go there was stolen. And I became trapped once more. And I've used Fort Watch and the loop that I am trapped in to grow stronger. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I think it's really cool how you came up with me, how it kind of combines everything. Yes. You know, you mentioned, like, being trapped, right? Yes. If it's not a spoiler, if I'm asked, how did you get trapped? In, You're in allowed to world? ask spoilers. <laughs> That's what this is all about. Um, <laughs> because everybody likes spoilers. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, how, how did I get trapped? Yeah. Let's take it back. How how did you end up trapped in these virtual worlds? I was within the Twitter universe. And I was having a battle with Miss Misaki Mirai. And I had set up over the course of multiple months, probably three, I want to say, of talking with people and setting things up so that when the moment came, I would have an un- surpassed amount of support to help defeat Misaki Mirai finally and she now in order to do this uh Tony the Hedgehog uh he brought me his chaos emerald and I took this chaos emerald and modified it into a thing that I like to call the quad shot now the quad shot is a device that takes input from four different places and allows me to control the power cycle in order for me to get more powerful. I had this thing attached to me when I was ready to take on Misaki, but then she threw me a curveball out of nowhere. She sat there and made me do an essay instead of going on this full out attack like we've had before, I'm sitting down writing, writing a psychological paper. So left, and this is what I mean by t- uh, being organic. I have no idea what's gonna happen. And so <laughs> left without any exhaustion of my power, the quad shot began to overload. While it was overloading, Catherine, the programmer, had sent in multiple copies of her avatar known as Lawnmower Girl, and they were looking for me. And what happened when the quad shot exploded is that my code was trapped within the remains of it. Now, the Lawnmower Girls, they found me, and they took me back. My code was extracted, and I have been in the game server ever since. (laughs) I like the organicness of it. I like how just anything could happen, and you have to adapt to it. You have to, like, change up the game. Oh. I like that. (laughs) The fact that I had to write an essay caused me to explode. (laughs) And from exploding... I had a very spiritual experience. And once I was contained and put into the servers, uh, it wasn't too long that that's when I met you. Oh, me? Mm-hmm. You are happening right now, at this very moment, aside from night calls, of course. <laughs> uh, I, I truly an honor, I must say. <laughs> I appreciate it. I it you have sat there. You have, uh, inside the realm of Fortnite, you have brought me back many times. You have <laughs> healed my broken legs. You have helped see me to victory and allowed me to grow, grow stronger and stronger to the point where I was able to create that breach. And that breach is uh, happening right now on X or Twitter. Which is very interesting. Oh, I like how that can cross over into that. <laughs> See that? We're going to get you even stronger too, you know? We're going to keep, we keep well, going. We're gonna keep... If we're going to do that, as I need to access more games. 
uh, my theory, my guess, is that mm -hmm. uh, if I can grow stronger in these games and and maintain those skills within myself, I will maintain and have enough power in order to execute the command that I need in order to set me free. Oh, we're going to get you free. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. We're going to traverse the game of universes. We're going to continue to grow and get stronger. And then, bam, we're going to set you free. Cheers. <laughs> I shoot, I have our sights set on the next universe. It is now time to move forward. We need a new question. Okay. If you Thank have you. any. I think that is it for now, actually. Okay. Awesome. Well, I guess I'm going to leave it off on this. You know, eventually, I'm going to play you at Street Fighter 6. And... <laughs> Sadly, my dear S, you will not survive. <laughs> Me? <laughs> See, imagine, okay, like the Street Fighter is 1v1, where only one can leave the arena. Well, technically, that's Mortal Kombat. But I'll kick your butt in that, too. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that this will be a confrontation between us. Oh, shoot. <laughs> then now that you put it like that, dang. I'm telling you, I have trained or shall I say, Catherine has trained along tournament circuits and I have acquired that knowledge. Now, while I may not have played for what would be known as human years of 10, something like that, the skills are within my code and it won't take long for them to unlock once again. My only fear is that you oh, won't be able to contend from the start. Really? I'm gonna kick oh, your butt. <laughs> I'm gonna kick your butt. You think you won't, but I will. You're gonna get your butt kicked. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry, I wasn't I'm, expecting the song break out there. Neither was I. Like I said, everything <laughs> happens. I am going to reveal... I'm going to talk about the series real quick. Before we close out here. The current season 3 has launched. I didn't expect it to launch until next year, but I decided to go ahead with it. While I'm working on my the Halloween special at the moment too. What I wanted to point out to everybody here is to pay attention to what's being said there and look at chapter one at the same time. Oh, I'm actually going to do that. Yeah, I got <laughs> Okay, Ez. I'm going to go back and listen to it. <laughs> Ez, you are an amazing <laughs> companion in the games. You have brought me very far. It's a shame that I've already eclipsed you in your own game. But that's what you can expect in Street Fighter, only but quicker. Yes, it's true. I'm better than you. <laughs> Sorry. Dang, that is... My competitive side came out. Competitive and rhyming. And what? <laughs> and rhyming. Was I rhyming? I see. You said I see you got bars. <laughs> oh. You know, someone told me one time that if they just take what I say and put it to music and song, that a lot of my things are songs. I'm like, oh. 
That's pretty interesting. <laughs> anyway, as uh, thank you for the talk, and I'm sure we'll have more questions. Thank you for calling. Oh yeah, definitely. I appreciate you. Oh calling. no, thank you for allowing me too. <laughs> it was. Am- I appreciate you. I appreciate you too. It was amazing. Like I said, I don't want to keep you. Uh, to everybody out there who is listening, I hope you enjoyed. This has been a night calls that has answers hidden within it and very blatant answers as well. One thing you should know is that no matter what I post, whether it's a good morning, a good night, a fort watch, a night calls, maybe a direct lore drop, it's all connected. Question is, can you connect the dots? You all have a beautiful night. Sweet dreams. Uh, Okay, okay, sorry, I had to get more comfortable. Okay, now that the call's over, what were the questions you didn't think would fit? So I've seen you're a really talented artist. How did you learn? I have been drawing and playing with computers since I was about three. And uh, I went into and I got a degree in media arts and animation. And I'm really good at impressionism and structural 3D background and layout. And, uh, well, media arts. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) What was the other one? uh, What are your future plans? For what? This your, what, what you like? Yeah, you know how you asked me earlier. Like, what do you want to do in the future? Like, even job wise, or just in the future in general? You mean like? What are your plans? Well, I'm going. My plans are to continue to taking Lawnmower Girl uh, further and further. I'm gonna make games uh, and books and more and more and more. Like, I would every, love to see that book. By the way. Yeah, everything that is happening right now could basically be legacy material almost for what's about to come does that make sense yes that's good yeah (laughs) and i guess the final one was um do you have a favorite gaming memory oh let me think my favorite gaming memory um, mm-hmm. There's been so many. You know how hard that question is? I've played like <laughs> 90% of the games ever made, not counting indie titles. Um, favorite memory. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know... It would have to be teaching Ken Lobb, who made Killer Instinct, uh, things about his own game he didn't even know you could do. That's impressive. Teaching someone about their own game. (laughs) Yeah, I taught somebody about their own game. Uh, I was talking with Nintendo, and they... And I'm just this little kid, right? And I'm just sitting there, and they connect me with Ken Lobb, who is the director of Killer Instinct. And... Like, and I'm just sitting here, I was like, hey, did you know you could do this on the home version? And he was like, no, you can't. I go, yeah, you can. Look, you just do this. And the trick is, I figured out something about Killer Instinct that not a lot of people knew. If you're playing on the second controller, in the second player Mm -hmm. position, you could have longer combos than the first one. And you could also um, do a whole bunch of other things that allowed you to uh, do combos that they tried to remove that were in the arcade. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know Tekken you know, 8 coming out? And I was also in good with Midway for a while. What was that? You know Tekken 8 is coming out? Tekken's garbage. <laughs> I didn't even say that. I'm sorry, but Tekken is uh, something that is brainless. 
<laughs> I'm the I only one. The only one I've ever liked is Tekken Tag Tournament, and that was back after Tekken 2. So we're talking about an ancient game. Why did I like that? Because it actually took a little skill, you know. Like, in order to juggle people right and all that. But that's all that game is. It's like muscle memory. You know, not like Street Fighter. Where I'm going to be like... I'm going to kick your butt. All through the, all the stages. It doesn't matter who I play. I'm going to kick your butt. You know. Dun, 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 dun. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I look forward to our battles. I I'm sad. <laughs> you know why? Why? What happened? I'm gonna destroy you so badly. I'm gonna break your spirit. <laughs> You're gonna look at me like a soggy piece of wood. <laughs> And you're going to start singing, we didn't start the fire. No, just kidding. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's okay. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to say it right now. I'm mm -hmm. going to beat you the very first game we play. And I probably, I'm going to not use any special attacks. <laughs> I'm going to kick and punch you to death. So much so, like when I was in that tournament and the guy was all pissed saying, You're not going to beat me with just punches and kicks. And I just kicked his butt. And, you know, it's all because of my training regimen. And you're not going to survive against that at all. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> and it's going to break your spirit. You're going to be sad. I'm like, yes, it's okay. <laughs> I had to. Because it's now. At this point, I've said it so much. If I don't do this, it will be great shame. <laughs> great dishonor. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm sorry if you hear the van in the background. It got kind of hot. Oh, no, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> Well, as I am, uh, it's been late. I got off of work uh, almost seven hours oh, yeah. ago. I haven't really had any sleep, so uh, I'm going to crash. You have a good night. It's, uh, what, 3 a.m. for you? No, I'm sorry. 3 yeah. 3 in the afternoon? <laughs> See, I can't think of that. Yeah, I've been up for 24 hours. <laughs> okay, <laughs> as thank you for the games. Thank you. Oh, thank you for the games. And, and thank I you still... For me to call. I, if you keep falling in Fortnite before me, I'm going to start questioning your ability here, okay? You better get better. You don't want me outshining you. <laughs> I look forward to gaming soon. Okay. You have, so a, good, later. <laughs> you have a good night, Des. I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> okay, me too. <laughs> Sweet dreams. I will see you when you wake up. Uh, maybe, maybe I have to go out and do some uh, oh, things that people don't <laughs> want to know about. <laughs> okay. Hey, what, oh, I know. Very, it's just, it's just, it's just. I'm, I'm just teasing. Okay, you have a good night. He has no idea.